I'll put gas works. Well, someone will knock on the door and she'll go into the sleep. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou kato. Um, nā mihi nui ki a tātou kato ko tamahunga te maunga, uh, ko mahurangi te awa nō rānana ahau, ko Charlotte Nightingale toku inoa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou kato. Kia ora, haere mai, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Charlotte Nightingale and I'm the Artistic Director of Glass Ceiling Arts Collective and I am so excited that um, this wonderfully sunny afternoon we get to spend um, share some space um, together and explore the Badger story which is a multi-sensory um, experience, a theatre in the home experience. I'm going to start with a karakia, um, so let's just take a really nice deep breath and just um, feel ourselves here in this beautiful space here in Devonport. <sighs> Fakataka te hau ki te uru, Fakataka te hau ki te tonga, kia ma kinakina ki uta, kia ma taratara ki tai, ehi ake ana te atakura, he tio, he huka, he hohu. Tihe Mauriora. I'm just going to give you a little bit of an audio description of me and where I am. Um, I am a uh, Pakeha uh, woman and I have blondish hair. It looks quite dark here <laughs> in a ponytail. Um, I'm wearing a sort of pinkish t shirt and or when I stand up, I um, I'm wearing a, um, some tie-dye black and pink and yellow um, trousers. I love my tie-dye. Um, and I'm in a living room uh, and it's kind of got some really beautiful uh, molding on the ceiling and some kind of old school lights and uh, some bookcases uh, and curtains. Uh, around me. Um, to the side of me, which you won't see at the moment, but I will pick up some things, some uh, props, multi-sensory props um, and things uh, that I have collected for today. Um, and that's beside me. So they'll come in and out of the screen. And beside me as well, just to my, um, to my right hand side, to uh, your left, um, is um, Mike Eagleson, who is the general manager of Glass Ceiling Arts Collective. You might see his hand just there. Um, he's the, the tech person for um, this afternoon because I certainly couldn't do all those things um, at all. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of information about who we are because we're a relatively new uh, charity. Uh, we're an arts charity and we really work in the area of arts accessibility and inclusion. Um, we often use arts as a vehicle for societal change. We're really interested in how we use art to change and challenge people's perceptions. Um, and we have a successful youth program that runs in Auckland and Tauranga and is uh, through funding through Manatu Tonga is actually being rolled out across the country. So we've got new programs that are starting next year in Whangarei, in Wellington and in Christchurch. Um, we have a next gen program for pathways for particularly disabled performers into professional performance. Um, and, um, and then what I'm talking about today is and sharing with you is our passion for multisensory um, experiences, multisensory theatre. Um, we like making multisensory theatre, particularly for audiences with PMLD, with profound and multiple learning disabilities. But also what we found through our research is that um, using multisensory devices is um, highly accessible to all people and really is can be a vehicle to bring everybody together and we're really keen to um to share this across Aotearoa we know that using multi-sensory devices creates a truly personalized narrative for someone so however they connect with the world however they are they have the choice the freedom of choice to explore a narrative themselves and that's disabled and non-disabled. Anybody can use these devices and have this personalized experience. 
Um, we are keen on collaborators and sharing our mahi, and we are interested in your um, experiences and your ideas as well. So please do um, get in touch. And if you want advice or support, um, we are one of two organizations that really work in the space. The other you would have seen earlier are Jolt um, in Christchurch. So um, it would be really great if you are keen on this kind of work to, to connect with us. Um, one thing I should say is that <laughs> we've We've got a sort of low hum in the background here of roadworks that are behind us. And um, for the start of this week, we didn't have this low hum, but it seems to have come on in, um, in Spadefalls today. So I, I apologize for that um, today. Um, one thing I did want to just say here is that we are really actively trying to share these skills and this knowledge. And one of the ways we're doing that is through hopefully um, trying to get funding through Manatu Tonga to roll out um, a program that upskills arts organizations and creatives in this kind of work so that they can use it in their own mahi. Um, we're off, our application is online. If you, if you are interested in this kind of work, we'd really, really love your feedback on our application just on the Manatu Tonga website. Um, it's really important actually that this work um, work continues to grow in Aotearoa. Um, so we'd love you to really connect with that too. So the Badger story, um, it's it got the longest kind of um, description ever because I remember when we first decided to do this, we were like, how can we actually um, describe what this thing is all about? Because it's it's kind of nothing anyone's done before. So it's, um, it's a multi-sensory digital theatre in the home experience, and it's made specifically for audiences with PMLD to share with their whānau, with their friends. So theatre in the home is quite key here. And if you look around me, you can see that I've got curtains here. Now, it's a beautiful sunny day, but sometimes what is it's good to it's good to do this at night so that you can use the curtains to create that real magic of theater um, and to darken your room um, so some of the elements we're going to use today will work as well as they can in, in the middle of the day but do work really amazingly well if if it's night um, so this piece of theater was created during lockdown and it was at a time when I'm sure, obviously, you've been hearing, I've, I've been hearing while I've been sitting in the conference, at a time when the disability community have been extremely vulnerable. And particularly those with profound disabilities, um, you know, this, this work has been made with them in mind. And the feedback that we were getting from our communities and the people that we work with was that there wasn't enough arts experiences that really resonated with this community during that during the lockdowns. And I think I can safely say that there isn't a huge amount of um, live theatre work that really resonates with these communities, that really is tailor-made for these communities. Um, so, um, which is why it's so important for us to share our knowledge. We know that arts are so um, so incredibly important for our health and well-being, and particular particularly during COVID, I think everybody can um, can um, identify with with how the arts helped us sort of move through those very challenging times. Um, so making something that was meaningful for a vulnerable audience was really important. Um, having the parameters um, of of COVID, these kind of um, tight boundaries around us um, were very challenging, but also forced us to be super creative. Um, and this comes out of that creativity. Um, it enabled us to reconnect with Frozen Light in the UK, um, who uh, make uh, theatre, live theatre work for audiences with, with PMLD, who we've worked with before um, in Auckland. Um, and also we worked with several artists across um, Aotearoa via Zoom in various different places. We worked with Tusk Puppets in Christchurch. We worked um, 
with Ryan Gray McCoy um, in Wellington, Jeremy Hinman, I think it was in several places, Sam Jones in Auckland, Gareth Pring, Tom Grew, myself, and also eventually when we had these um, rules around being together, we worked uh, with UB College's South Seas Film and Television School, uh, where we filmed um, some of the scenes, some of the live scenes, and we worked with um, Alicia McLennan Marla, um, with Julie Van Rennen and um, Courtney Nairn uh, as our performers in that. Um, this uh, particular piece is, um, is supported through funding through Creative New Zealand and the IHC, um, as well as supported through UB College's South Seas Film and Television School. And we wanted to create something that was free so that we could remove all barriers to uh, for you to participate in this. So how do you do it? Well, it's accessed via our website and we're actually gonna share screen very soon and you're going to see the web platform that it's on. But I urge you, we're gonna do a little section from it, but I urge you to go back to it and to enjoy it and explore it and share it with your your friends with your whanau with your colleagues with everybody because it's there for free um and we are really really keen to remove financial barriers for um communities to experience this work and our work in general so there's a resource booklet that you can download and it looks like this um, and it has instructions as to how to do it. It's got um, all sorts of pictures and, and things in it. So you can download this from the website, but you can also get it from us. So we've got copies of it. If you really want it, please do um, email us or put, put your name down in the chat and um, we'll send a copy to you. Um, we're keen to share that too. Um, so if you go to our website and you want to see the Badger story, you need to go to the events and you'll see, you'll click on the tab, the Badger story, and everything is there um, for you to enjoy it yourself at home when you, when you come away from, from today. So I've got a table of props beside me um, and I'm gonna sort of tip my camera down and see if you can see um, there's a table full of all sorts of different things. And I'm gonna, uh, I know you should have should have some props with you, but if you haven't had the chance to actually bring those props with you, honestly, it doesn't matter. Just enjoy it. Just um, do what you can and just watch me um, uh, fooling around on the screen and, and have a good laugh at my expense because this is gonna be, this is actually my happy place doing multi-sensory stuff. So I'm gonna have an absolute ball. So if you're not experiencing it yourself, by all means, just, just watch me. It's um, I'm going to have a great time. So the the ones that we've decided for today are glow sticks. I've got the most glowing sticks I could get um, on a summer's day, and they're not particularly glowy. But um, I've got some glow sticks. I've got a water bottle, and I like to use lots of different kinds of water bottles. Um, this one I like because you can open it a little bit and spray it around. I'm not going to do that just in case I spray it on mic today, but quite often I spray it around and do all sorts of things. Also, um, I filled it with uh, lemon barley water, so you can fill it with whatever you like. Um, and sometimes it's really good to have a straw, one with a straw, um, if you're um, if you you know find it difficult for to use um, these types of uh, things to drink with and um, a straw is often a really good way to go um and often i kind of put dye in it and colors and things to if, if you know that someone's not going to shake it and uh, not going to drink it i might put glitter in it and stuff like that too um but obviously you don't want someone to, to drink that glitter um i've got leaves and foliage from my garden and i'm going to speak a little bit about this because when you go to do this maybe at home you might want to think about this um, as well so this is my leaves and foliage this is some manuka from my garden but i also have this i'm a very horsey person and this is what we call chaff and we give it to i give it to my horses every night and it smells of just freshly cut grass 
it's actually meadow chaff and so this smells really nice but i often use something called lucerne chaff which you can get if you know any horsey people and it's kind of wet and it stinks and it gives a really massive reaction of like oh that's disgusting and i'm gonna touch it oh you know but it's actually really good to have things that aren't necessarily really nicely smelling so um but today just so i didn't stink out mike's house here um and he's got a lovely dog here who probably would have tried to get into it um I've got meadow chaff. Um, and I also have this. I also have chickens. <laughs> so I've got, I think I've got a bit of chaff up nose now, actually. But um, I've also got wood shavings. And the reasons why I've got wood shavings is one I found working with, with people um, is that it has a really lovely sound. It has a really lovely te texture when you touch it. And it has the most delicious smell. So I just absolutely love it. And I like throwing it around, it doesn't do much damage. It's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, and I'm just gonna put those back. And I've got mud here, which um, I'm gonna try not to kind of stamp into Mike's um, beautiful carpet behind me. Um, and, uh, but I've got mud with a bit of water in it. It's got wood chips, it's got clay, it's got all sorts of stuff, but man, you can have so much fun with mud. So we've got that too. Um, and also to counteract the mud, I've also got this. And this is my nice bowl of really nice warm scented water with soap in it. So I've used this eco store like Manuka, mint and honey. So something with a really nice strong scent is really good. Um, and a really nice washcloth as well to wash my face, my feet, anything else that gets all muddy um and these are definitely a go-to for any multi-sensory um thing that i'm doing uh they, these are just spray bottles with water and they've got salty water in them but um they are awesome these spray bottles i have so much fun with them so um if you want to use you can use any spray bottle but just be careful if you're using something that's kitchen cleaner or something that it's not too abrasive and you don't want someone putting that in their mouth but um yeah these are just from um kmart but i use them all the time and and flavor them and put scents in them and all sorts it's, it's lots of fun um and then over here i'm just gonna wander over here um and this is a really nice part of the part of the uh, multi-sensory experience i'm just going to unravel this beautiful blanket lovely fleecy meaty blanket because it's got a hot water bottle in which definitely as you can hear i'm english hot water bottles were a massive part of my life <laughs> and just wrapping this in a hot water bo bottle or a, or a hottie really helps um in the in the bit where we use the the tactile fabric so i've done that as well um and also, there are a few other things that I usually use to create some ambience. Um, in the room, I usually use one of these, which is um, a wax burner. Um, this is a Scentsy wax burner, but it's, it doesn't matter which one you use. And here are the wax things. And I'm forever going and finding different, um, ordering different scents and stuff to see what kind of emotions they evoke and, and um, how they make me feel, how they make um people feel when we go out and do our research and our testing and stuff um yeah i really enjoy working with these so that's something that i often use but obviously they are hot wax so you've got to be quite careful depending on where you're doing it um i also sometimes use these which are um candles they're actually not wax candles there i'll just switch it on they're color changing. They are made of wax, but they're electric candles. They're just from Kmart. I often put these around and, you know, create that really nice atmosphere of being at night. So that's quite cool. Um, and, oh, and then I've got torches, which I completely forgot. And I've got two torches here. I've got the big one that I actually take out when I am, um, Go and I've got a horse that's neighing in the dark and I take this big torch out or a, a pig that's kind of gone AWOL. But, um, and I've also got one of these ones which are also just as good, but um, using different torches, different kind of means of, of making light, projectors, uh, um, lamps that have um, interesting shades, um, all those kind of things are, are quite fun um, to use and explore. 
Um, and the other thing that I have here is I've got um, a random tray um, that I've kind of picked some bits out of and that I use to project um, shapes across um, across people or across myself, it will be today. And hopefully you'll be able to see and experience that today. Um, we'll see how it goes with this, this light in this room. Um, I've got a couple of other things I'm just gonna show you that I use that we won't actually use today, but I know are a real winner when I use them. So these are, the first ones are these. And these are, they're plastic, so they're not very environmentally friendly, but you can use them again and again and again. These are really good to stand on or to put underneath somebody's feet. Or um, I love them because I sort of stand on them, I might lay on them and I kind of like the texture. It's kind of got, it makes you feel, um, kind of quite uncomfortable so if you're talking about a story where you're kind of stuck in the bush and it's uh, lots of kind of spiky plants or whatever kind of lying on this really gives this um, that kind of idea and um, so that's cool and then I also quite often use this because this is kind of um, yeah super tactile I might use it um, to put on a on a, uh, a little tray on a if someone is using a um, a wheelchair and and has maybe sort of limited movement sometimes i would use something like this that they can sort of explore i can help them explore so that's quite handy as well um and then the last one which is um my favorite thing but it's the most difficult thing to put away but um it is this and this is there's a part where there are moon rays and so i use this incredible thing. So it kind of looks a little bit here like a, um, a jellyfish. You could use it in like a sea story or whatever. But I love this because you can do so many different movements. You can dance with it. You can have somebody sat inside it. Um, you can have them explore it and feel it. Um, it's awesome. And it's cheap as shit. And um, yeah, one of my go to's when I'm um, when I'm working. Okay. Um, the other thing that you might not have, because I don't know whether I put it down on the list, but it, that can be really exciting, is headphones. Um, I'm not going to use them today, but I do encourage you, if you do have headphones, to use them because we actually use binaural sound in the Badger story, and we we are doing a lot of research and development of how we use this kind of sound and binaural sound is by no means new but um the technology and the the way that we we use it now kind of is has is, is really developed in the past few years um we use a microphone that looks like a human head so it has ears and when you record it records the sounds as a human would hear them so if you imagine there is a bee buzzing around your head it's going to pan across you so when you close your eyes and listen to that bee it will be as if the bee is around you or, or if you have low vision and do it you can you don't need to have the um the the visual of the bee you 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 feel the bee around you um so the 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 parts of that we're going to play today some of them do have binaural sound so if you do um have headphones it's it's a great idea to put them on as well um and if we are using binaural sound in a theater context what we might do is um some people might want to use headphones and we would have bluetooth headphones to use some people might not so we um we have would use uh surround sound in that instance and and where the sound would be bouncing off different speakers in the space so um it's a, a different it's a really great tool to to create a soundscape to create that kind of sound narrative and it can be experienced in various different ways depend and can be personalized to yourself to who you're working with and to anybody so it's, it's quite an awesome tool now in a minute we're going to start and we're doing a little section from it but we're actually going to play it from the beginning and the reason why is just so that it kind of sets up the story, but we won't play the end. Um, and also the first scene that we have um, 
means that you have to make bread dough. And I just thought on a Wednesday morning, making, getting up early and making some bread dough probably wasn't on your, your list of priorities, probably being um, in your, in the conference and listening to wonderful speakers um, talking today um, would be your priority. So I, we, we decided not to do that one. But um, you're going to see a couple of scenes before we get started. So I am going to get Mike to put the video and you will see me in the in the corner and I will explore it. I will talk you through it um, um, as if I am doing it for myself and uh, and for you. And uh, we'll see how it goes. It's, it, this is something that we haven't necessarily done before. So uh, it's going to be quite experimental and experiential. So I hope you enjoy it um, as much as I'm going to enjoy playing with some beautiful props today. Um, and just before I get Mike to share his screen, I am going to say that if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. We're really keen to connect. Um, we will have a little bit of time at the end to answer some of those questions. Um, but also, if typing a message in a chat isn't your thing, you are more than willing to send us a message, a voice message on, on Facebook or um, Instagram and we'll get back to you um, or get in co contact via email. Okay. Sandra. Can you ask Sandra to? Sandra. <laughs> oh, there we go. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> awesome. So we're going to start. Are you Welcome ready? Welcome to the Badger story. Once upon a time, there was a young lady called Meredith Pumpernickel, like the bread. And her hair was like little dough sausages coming out of her head. So if you see now, so there's a little scene, and then here there's a little bit that loops. And if you read, I'll read what it says on the screen. It says Meredith uh, Meredith Pumpernickel's hair was like little dough sausages coming out of her head. Take some time to explore the dough or bread that you've made. Everyone should take the time to feel it, smell it. And maybe even taste it. So normally we would have some bread dough, we'd do some eating, we'd share some pie, it would be really awesome. We're not going to do that today, so we're going to move on to the next one. Meredith liked to dance the tango with her friend Eleonora Zanzibar from Argentina. Eleonora Zanzibar was a beautiful lady. She had fine hair and soft, soft skin. And she traveled in a chariot made from a cosmic material called carbon fiber. It was an enchanted chariot and she used her magic hands to make it dance. And this is another sensory moment that we're not going to do. And this we normally use a kaleidoscope or something that moves in a circular kind of motion. Um, and often we use light and a kaleidoscope and to show this enchanted wheel. So it says it was an enchanted chariot and she used her magic hands to make it dance. Use the torch on the base of the kaleidoscope and turn it to create some magical patterns inside. And it is an awesome moment. Eleonora was the greatest dancer of all time and everyone around the world wanted to dance her famous tango, especially Meredith Pumpernickel. But recently, Eleonora had grown tired of tango and gotten into breakbeat. She wanted to go raving with her glow sticks and her water bottle. Here we go. Right, and we're going to have our little way. Okay? I don't know if you need to have a way. This is my favorite one. Some really good raving. Oh, the music has suddenly gone off for some reason. And this is 
Until we're ready to come back, and then we're just going to press the next scene. Meredith was jealous of Eleanor. She wanted a chariot of her own and thought that girls with chariots should not go to raise, but only dance the tango. Meredith flew into a rage, cold and menacing, and told Eleanor, You must only dance the tango, and only with me. No, said Eleonora. I love Breakbeat. I will never dance the tango ever again. Eleonora fled off in her chariot into the darkness of the forest. So this is a good moment to use your headphones because it uses binaural sound if you have them. And you'll hear the beautiful sounds of the bush, um, as well as music made by Sam Jones. And I'm just going to explore some of this beautiful um, multi-sensory things. And I really love to use these little bits of manuka to just go all around my face and my head and give me a little tickle. And it's beautiful and, and also you won't be able to see this here but i'm also going to take my shoes off and i'm gonna i'm gonna do it on my feet and tip on my feet and just really feel that beautiful sensory moment um, and enjoy and explore that as you listen to the sounds of the bush and then i'm going to take this and smell this wonderful chaff that i've got here from the meadows and I'm also going to go and take it over here and I'm going to sprinkle it on my feet so you might not be able to see my feet here but I'm just going to move this down just about see me I'm going to sprinkle this on my feet because it kind of feels a little bit like rain as I do it and and it's kind of itchy as well. <laughs> Smell it. And then I'm going to find these bits. And I'm going to stand on this because the way it feels on my feet, it's going to create. Oh, it's actually really, really. I'm quite uncomfortable on my feet as I as I put my feet in it. And I'm going to use this as well. Wrinkle around and explore, smell. And the other thing I'm going to do just at this moment, because this is when um, Eleonora goes into the forest, I'm going to spray some of this, and this is patchouli, and I'm just going to spray it around and it just smells, it has this really, really strong smell. Sometimes I, I use eucalyptus, but, you know, getting that idea of it being in a completely different space in your own, in your own room. So kind of using our senses to, to create a feeling of being in a forest, being in a really different, different space. Awesome. And we're going to move on to the next scene. As Eleonora travelled into the forest, she became engulfed in pitch blackness, except for the silvery light of a waxen moon. And this is a moment which is why it's really lovely to be in the darkness. And because we're going to draw some light now. And first of all, taking the big and actually what is quite exciting is when I use it against the camera, it kind of creates some amazing trails across the screen. And then I'm going to use my moon. I can use anything. Sometimes I use a um, piece of paper that I just like take paper and use piece of paper. And I just explore the light around myself, around the space. 
can't really see this, but actually it's making these incredible patterns all around the room. I'm wondering if I could show you that. Space. I assure you, it's beautiful. In your home, you're managing to explore the light. Sometimes when we do this, we're making this kind of moon up in the sky, and you know. And on the floor, lying down, um, looking at this beautiful light kind of moving across the space and following that light and getting people who are friends, our friends, people who are uh, um, really explore the light. They also explore the light themselves and have various different kinds of lights. So, um, <laughs> We're trying to work out a way that we can do it better, but it's difficult. But actually, you know, even things like this, where we're doing it together, look at that. We can do that. We can do it. Yeah, using lights, having different kinds of lights that we can use and explore. The dainty and precious wheels of her chariot could not cope in the detritus of the dense forest and it stopped dead, stuck in the mud. This is one of my favourite bits because this is all about being stuck in the mud. So her chariot stopped dead, stuck in the mud. So we're going to plunge our hands into some really lovely wet mud. And also this is pretty cool is I've got loads of clay in here and I like to get the mud on my hand and then draw stuff across myself. So I might draw, sort of cover myself in mud. Um, normally I kind of like to do stuff like this and really kind of explore it. Um, I would put it on my feet, but I don't want to tread it into my carpet today. But there is something amazing about the smell and texture of mud that is totally and absolutely awesome. So we're just going to spend a little bit of time. This one's quite gritty as well. It's got some, um, I think it's got some, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, oh, I can see some, some ants in this too. It's fresh from my garden. Um, uh, it's got some little bits of wood and forest and stuff, which is cool. So now I'm covered in mud, as you can see, which I'm totally loving. Just smelling this awesome aroma of mud across me. And um, I'm going to then put the mud away and I'm going to do the total opposite. I'm going to plunge my hands into this beautiful warm water. It smells of mint and manuka and honey, and I'm going to wash everything up. And the other thing that's really awesome about this particular um, scene is this when I was, when we were recording this scene, we took um, someone into the forest to film, uh, to listen to the, the um, the sound that happens in the water when, when the mud when they get stuck in the mud so that's a pretty awesome spinal sound as well <laughs> mike's looking beside me like oh my goodness what are you doing in my living room i'm going to be clearing this up forever and fortunately um, his wife diane is in the other room so she can't see so i'm hoping that we'll, we'll end up making it um <laughs> making it good by the time she comes in but i'm just gonna I hate the football space and there's something really lovely about it. the smell of being clean after being covered and having a play in some beautiful mud. It's just awesome. Okay, I'm going to go to the next scene.
Like a cold and heavy mist, Meredith followed Eleonora into the forest. They stopped face to face. <laughs> Mike told me I've gone very over time. So I'm just going to quickly do this beautiful bit after we've just washed ourselves with our manuka, uh, honey and mint wash. We're going to cover ourselves with some beautiful mist. And like it tastes of salt, this does. But sometimes I'll have one that tastes of salt and I'll label it and one that actually smells of something that is totally awesome. And I'm going to spray it on my feet and neck. Really just get you into that mood of feeling awesome. Great. Let's go to the next one. Suddenly, out of the rolling mist, there came a badger. Having never seen a badger up close before, Eleonora and Meredith were shocked at the size and sheer power of the short legs as they hurtled towards the pair. The waxy coat, the stripe of white that seemed like lightning, the whites of tiny eyes fixated on them. The badger had on its face a wry smile, such like you might give if you knew something the other person didn't. It was quite chilling. <laughs> Suddenly, out of the rolling mist, there came a badger. So this is our moment when we're going to get our fabric. Lovely and warm. I'm this cold mist to feeling the warm texture of this badger badger's coat. So I'm going to wrap this around me. Mm, and it's just awesome. I just love feeling the texture of this. It just makes you feel enveloped in this great you know, imagine if you were in a forest you didn't know where you were this huge badger came out and felt such a and that is where we're going to finish <laughs> So we have a few more scenes, so you'll actually have to go and um, explore the rest of it um, yourselves. So we can take the badger's story off screen now. And um, gosh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sort of covered in bits of mud, looking a little bit grubby. It's going to be fun on the school run. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that. We've got a couple of minutes for questions. I'm so sorry. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible timekeeper. I told you, as soon as I get into these multi-sensory bits, I just kind of get carried away and just love it. Um, are there any questions that anybody has at all? And um, totally fine if you just need some time to kind of digest what we've just done and process and um, just explore it. We don't have any questions. Oh, that's okay. That's all good. Um, but please do, do get in touch with us. We're really keen to collaborate. We're keen to share this work. We're keen to share these skills. We're keen to explore and play. You know, I think even today working with that light today with um, having having the camera and the light, you know, I've just suddenly thought, oh, wow, wouldn't it be great um, to be able to explore that a bit further and see how we can use that in our practice as well to really reach out to lots of communities who who perhaps would not be able to come to a to an experience live with us. Um, yes. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for sharing this space with me. Um, oh, Thank you very much. That's very nice of you saying um, you've enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, thank you. I I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And um, we've got a, a very sensory, multi-sensory dog that's come in. Um, Winnie, are you going to come over? I was wondering whether Winnie's probably going to be, I'm hoping it's going to be in our next show, which we've got a new work that we're working on called Spark at the moment. And um, there's a black and white dog. I don't know if you can see her. It's a very fluffy dog, Winnie, here she is, um, that will be a star of that too. So please, um, yeah, connect with us. We're keen to, keen to hear your ideas and share, share our work with you. Thank you so much and have a great, great afternoon.
Kakite.